Our next speaker needs little introduction. Uh, Daniel will talk to us about GR satellite. Well, th on the line. It's very exciting. thank you very much. I'm glad to be here for the first time, actually. So, what is GR satellites? GR satellite is a GNU radio out of three module and has a collection of uh, telemetry decoders for many different amateur satellites. And uh, by amateur satellite, I understand any kind of satellite which transmits data, digital data, on amateur radio spectrum. So these are satellites built uh, by research institutions, uh, educational projects and universities, also amateur in individuals or small groups, uh, things like that. If we see these as a uh, small black box, uh, the input uh, to the decoder is usually IQ RF samples either taken in real time from SDR hardware or uh, a conventional radio like a uh, Kenwood or ICOM amateur radio or maybe an IQ recording uh, done with that hardware before. And uh, the output you get from the decoder is uh, either packets uh, printed out in hexadecimal format or you can save the packets uh, to a file on your computer or uh, parse telemetry values so those are things like uh, voltages of batteries and buses and uh, current intensities, temperatures um, and uh, maybe even uh, payload data so some satellites have experiments I don't know maybe a high energy particle detector for example the main project goal is uh, to provide an open source solution uh, to decode any amateur satellite. Uh, so there's some philosophy to that, that any amateur radio signal needs to have uh, clear um, public specifications for anyone to be able to build their own decoder, but that would be a matter for a different talk. Uh, this all started for fun and learning in 2015. Uh, some small projects I did with a uh, few satellites uh, no one besides the Orions had decoded before and it sort of grew up and turned into a collection uh, which is uh, mainly a one month project but I'm always eager to collaborate with other people so versioning uh, before summer this year uh, this was only working for GNU Radio 3.7 and it had uh, just a master branch, uh, releasing versions 1.1, 1 1.2, etc. And uh, since October, I switched to GNU Radio 3.8, and uh, most of the packet decoding is done in Python, so that was a uh, large but good change uh, from Python 2 to Python 3. And uh, now I have the main 3.8 branch, and I'm releasing versions 2.1, 2.2, it's 2.2 now on the branch. And uh, I've kind of dropped uh, development on the GNU Radio 3.7 version. So that is stuck in the past with the satellites that were supported before October. If anyone really wants a satellite which has appeared uh, only for 3.8, I might go and backport it to 3.7. Uh, but this talk is about a uh, large refactor I'm kind of doing right now to all the code base of GR satellites. Uh, this is in the next branch and when it's ready it will be released as version 3.0.0. So let's talk about how GR satellite looks like inside uh, to motivate uh, the need for this refactor. So each different satellite has its own flow graph we're talking more than 80 different satellites, so that's a huge amount of flow graphs. Uh, basic information is written in the README about each of the satellites or flow graphs, such as the kind of uh, protocols, photo recorrections, CRC codes it uses. So the README file is uh, quite useful, but very, very long. And uh, the flow graph contains uh, all the things you need to uh, turn IQ data into useful data. So you have uh, blocks to demodulate the data, to run for auto correction, to pass the telemetry into useful values, also image decoder for satellites which transmit JPEG data into small chunks. Uh, there's no GUI, 
Uh, the Flowgrass has some configuration parameters, uh, so the idea is you should run this as a .py script uh, generated from GRC from the terminal, so you can just say dash dash uh, whatever parameter. And uh, the input they get is standardized uh, to get in UDP input, so samples uh, streamed in in real, in real time using the UDP protocol and these are real, not IQ. Uh, this was chosen because it's the protocol used by GQRX uh, to stream data out, so you can interface to your satellites easily with GQRX. Also, if you have a WAV recording taken from a conventional radio or something like that, or just from Satnox, it's not uh, so much different uh, from this, so uh, interface into very different formats is always difficult. You need to handle uh, different sample rates and so on. And uh, from the point of view of output, you get everything printed out to the terminal or uh, passed on to other applications via sockets or files. So an example flow graph we can see here. Here I have my pointer. We have the UDP input. And then uh, some of you may recognize here an AFSK demodulator, so audio frequency GMSK actually. Uh, this is running with a GOM space U482C radio. So here we would perf perform the packet boundary de detection <coughs> to turn uh, different packets into PDUs. Uh, then FEC decoding. And uh, here we end up with uh, the useful packets transmitted by the satellite. So then it depends on your intended application for that. We can uh, submit uh, the packets to Satnox database with this telemetry forwarded block. And uh, we also have uh, a telemetry parser to print out uh, human readable values. Uh, but you could do something like uh, store into a file or whatever. So problems with this kind of approach. There's lots of repetition. As you can imagine, there's an FSK demodulator in many of the different flow graphs. So this is really difficult to maintain. If I want to change a single parameter for FSK demodulation or the kind of algorithm I use, I would have to go into maybe 50 different flow graphs updating the very same thing in all of them. So that was uh, natural and fine when there were very few flow graphs on satellites, but uh, it has grown a lot, so this doesn't make uh, sense any longer. At the same time, it's very flexible and not very flexible, so the user can go and change anything he wants. Uh, let's say, as in my example before, you want to write uh, the uh, packets into a file or process them with your custom whatever, or send them out to an application using ZMQ, you can do that. But uh, doing that is cumbersome, and if you want to do that for all the flow graphs, it's more or less impossible. And also, uh, for adding support to new satellites, which is something I do quite often as they keep launching more and more stuff, uh, it's also cumbersome. So you copy as a flow graph for a sort of similar satellite and then modify the things you need to change. So the main idea for the refactor would be to eliminate all this uh, redundancy. And uh, the motivation is, well, let's see if we can come up with a way to describe what the things the satellite is transmitting, like have a simple text file with uh, this satellite is doing this protocol with this uh, error correction and these sorts of things. And then we should have code to read that uh, text description and automatically figure out uh, how to put together the decoder flow graph. And I, ident I identify three different use cases for this kind of refactor decoder. One is a standalone decoder, like a command line tool where you say, hey, this is an IQ recording for this satellite, just decode the data for me and maybe print it on the screen or uh, put it to a file or whatever. 
And uh, so the command line tool should have enough uh, command line options to be flexible. It should support different kind of inputs and outputs. Also, an important use case is as uh, building blocks for other custom GNU radio decoders, maybe people building their own ground station solution for the satellite. Uh, that's something that ESA did uh, recently for the OPSAT satellite. Uh, so I recognize that uh, there are users who want to go uh, more advanced customization than just using the command line tool with everything built in. And also some other cool <coughs> thing which I haven't uh, gone at yet is a plugin. So this is uh, reused parts of GR Satellite, but not as a user to build something else, but uh, from the point of view of an application. So I'm especially interested in uh, hooking this to Satnox network uh, from the server side uh, decoding point of view. So ground stations everywhere in the world submit the data to Satnox. And uh, currently the decoding is done by the distributed ground stations. So this has the problem that whenever a new satellite is launched, if it uses really different protocols, they need to push the updated software to all the ground stations. And this is uh, costful and it takes time. So Satnox people are also interested in, hey, can we do server-side decoding? So I think your satellite would, be, would integrate really well with that. But also a plugin for GQRX or any other SDR GUI app would be really great to have like a pop-up menu. This signal I'm tuned to is this satellite do something with the data. So key elements, there are two key elements for the refactor. One is uh, what I call sat YAML files. And these are YAML files describing the satellite, basic information on the satellite name, NORAD ID, so on, and uh, the protocols and transmitters. Why YAML? It's just because uh, since uh, GNU Radio 3.8 is doing YAML for uh, GRC flow graphs and blocks, I figured out it wouldn't be such a bad choice to keep doing YAML also for yeah, satellites. Uh, so this is one part. The other one is components. Uh, the idea of components is to break up the decoding chain into logical higher level functions. Uh, we'll see that in a moment. Uh, so the idea is you have your very simple blocks, you put them together into high level components and then the way to write a SATYAML file is to specify what components you need to put together to decode the satellite. So that's what the standalone decoder do. It reads the SATYAML file for the satellite in question, figures out what components it needs to connect together, and runs the flow graph. But it's also possible for the user to go on GNU Radio Companion and use either high-level components or lower-level blocks from geosatellites to create any kind of uh, custom flow graph. So. Components, uh, speaking from the IQ data onto the final packet, you can break the chain logically into these uh, four main tasks. The first one is the modulators. These convert the RF samples into symbols. Then decoders look at the symbol stream, detect the boundaries of the packets, perform photo correction, CRC checking, etc. So roughly, this would correspond to the physical layer of the system. When we get to the upper layers, if we think of this as a network stack, it's kind of messy because uh, you have uh, CCSDS standard protocols, but many uh, small satellites uh, do uh, ad hoc protocols. So you don't really have like a good separation between different uh, network layers. So this kind of upper layer thing is handled by what I call transports. So whenever you want to convert from your physical frames into something else, maybe you want to perform defragmentation or things like that. 
or look at extra headers uh, that would be implemented in a transport. And finally, data syncs are the blocks which do something useful with the data, be it to print it on screen with uh, telemetry values, to submit it to some online server, to store it to file, to parse a uh, JPEG file, whatever. So if we look at the example before and uh, we identify the functionality all the part in red would be the demodulator, in this case for AFSK. Then these two blocks would implement a deframer for this particular GOM space radio. And then we have a few data syncs which uh, do the useful stuff. So if we replace all the low level uh, blocks in the example before with uh, components, we end up with uh, something much more simple uh, that uh, it's easier to understand for many users and easier to reuse. So we have this AFSK demodulator, just uh, turn any FSK signal into soft symbols. Uh, this GOM space U82C uh, deframer, whenever I have uh, this uh, custom protocol transmitted by this GOM space radio, just uh, detect packets, run for error correction, and uh, speed out the frames as PDUs, and then the useful things we want to do with the data. So any user who wants to work with this kind of GOM space radio, he doesn't really need to know about for error correction or anything like that. He just needs to know, well, it's this radio and it's transmit AFSK. So just put together these two blocks and you're done. So let's look at SATYAML. The example here is actually the SATYAML file for the satellite I'm using as example in this talk. Uh, the idea is uh, to describe the protocols that the satellite is using in a component-centric way. And uh, what I found is that uh, many of the protocols are very ad hoc. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to try to chase, to chase like all these specific parameters. Of course, we could describe uh, this kind of uh, GOM space uh, ad hoc framing uh, by things like it uses a uh, read Solomon CCSDS code and this kind of scrambler and uh, the header looks like this with uh, some Goli error correction. Uh, but... Uh, it uh, tends to become really messy. So whenever I see something which uh, looks kind of a toke, I just uh, call it by name rather than trying to parameterize it. So in here, uh, the framing we specify is just U8. Dot, uh, sorry, U48 uh, to C. And uh, that's the approach. So if we look at here, we have basic information like the main name of the satellite, alternative names. And uh, you can call the decoder by using any of these names. The NORAD ID, this is used uh, to transmit the uh, telemetry to SATNOX database. Also, you can call up the decoder using NORAD ID. So this is helpful to automate things. Uh, then for the data that transmit, uh, the satellite transmits, here you s we say we have a telemetry parser for the data and the name of the telemetry parser, this is actually a Python uh, class, is AU03 and here we describe the transmitter with uh, parameters related to AFSK and uh, for the framing we just say it's the custom GOM space radio thing. So this is the list of modulations and framing supported. Uh, modulations is something very basic, uh, FSK, BPSK and variations of that. But in the framings you can see uh, some really standard things like AX.25 and uh, some CCSDS protocols, but also some specific names of the satellites because they're using ad hoc protocols. Uh, you can also use uh, SATYAML in GNU Radio Companion. So the way to do that is you have the satellite decoder block, and the satellite decoder block 
does most of the work that the command line uh, tool does. So it uh, gets IQ samples on one end, and on the other end, it spits out uh, frames. So you're free to do whatever you want with the frames, but uh, you don't need to know anything about the satellite. You just write the name or put here the path of a SATYAML file, and this uh, block figures out how to put together the decoder. The standalone command line decoder looks like this. So you need to run it like GR satellites and then the name of the satellite because the amount and type of command line parameters you get depends on what sort of functionality is needed to decode the satellite. So for example, for this particular satellite, we have fort error correction decoding, so there's a verbose uh, fort error correction option, but uh, there's no CRC, so there's no uh, verbose CRC option. So the way this works is uh, when you run GR satellites AU03, uh, it looks at the SATYAML file, it figures out what kind of component blocks it needs to put together to decode this particular satellite, and then it asks every of those component blocks, what kind of command line options would you like to put into the uh, whole command line set? Uh, telemetry passes, this is something which was more or less present in previous versions in the same manner, uh, but I'm relying on it uh, so much uh, for this refactor. So it's done using a Python library called const Construct, which allows you to define how your data structures look like. Like the first field is 8 bits wide and it's called uh, whatever, <laughs> voltage. And uh, from this definition you get a parser and an encoder for free. So we use the parsers, not the encoders, but uh, if anyone wants to uh, build a satellite transmitter, he could use the encoders. So new telemetry definitions can be written by writing this construct structure uh, class. And uh, then this telemetry definition can be specified in SATYAML files and can also be used with the telemetry parser block, <coughs> which uh, just takes your construct structure and parses according to that. And uh, currently there are 20 different uh, telemetry definitions. There are many satellites without a parser. The format uh, the satellite uses, uh, for many of them, it's uh, publicly available. So just uh, because lack of time, I'm not adding more, but uh, if you want to help, that is something you can help with. And uh, something that the refactor also brings is a new uh, file slash image receiver. So there are several satellites which transmit uh, file or image data uh, broken up in small chunks. And uh, the way each of the satellites does it is uh, quite a bit different. Uh, some tag the sample, some tag the chunks which are with a chunk number, so you get things like chunk zero, chunk one, chunk two. Some don't and uh, assume that you are not going to miss any chunks and if you miss one chunk you're screwed. Uh, some don't tag the chunks but rather say this chunk starts at offset 1000 bytes within the file. So the idea of this uh, file image receiver is to have a general Python class that can deal in a generic way of, with these ways of transmitting data by chunks. And uh, to use a specific protocol, you should uh, derive from that class and implement the specific things. But uh, for most of the protocols, uh, the main functionality is already inside the general uh, Python class. So the things you need to specify when deriving the class are very, very little. And in uh, a few situations, it's enough uh, to build a construct structure where you just say this uh, field of the chunk is the chunk number, this is the useful data, this is file name, for example. 
Uh, so currently there's support for all these satellites. And uh, roadmap. Uh, most of the things uh, that were functional in V2 are now also in the next branch. I've been releasing alpha versions uh, to engage with the community because I don't want to break not a functionality but workflows for people who are used to modifying uh, flow graphs themselves or whatever. So just to engage with them, see if I break anything of what they were using. Uh, how well it works for them, etc. And currently I'm testing the performance of the modulators and when this is done, uh, probably I'll release B V3. Uh, but there are many possible improvements which are made easier by this uh, refactor. So this will keep appearing in later versions. And uh, final question, uh, what about integration with Satnox network? I don't know if there are any people from Satnox in the room. We have a thread open in the forums uh, since 2018. Not much progress has been done about integration uh, with GR satellites and Satnox, uh, both on their side or on my side. So hopefully with this new architecture, it's much easier to put things together and interface. So that's all for today. Thank you. Question over there, and if you're going to leave, please start very quietly, shuffling out of the Thanks, room. Thanks, Daniel, for the talk. I've got a question regarding uh, testing and avoiding the corrections for all the refactor reviews that you're doing. Do you have like uh, IQ captures uh, of all the satellites you support and the expected outcome that you run your uh, programs again, uh, or how do you do testing? Yeah, the question was about uh, testing and not breaking things with the refactor. So that was actually one of my major concerns and I don't really have much in terms of unit testing. I have uh, IQ small yeah. I have small IQ samples for most of the satellites and but not expected output because uh, depending on Gunner radio version or some variations, some of the packets can be barely missed or barely decoded. Uh, so what I look like, what I look at is uh, that when I run the recording through the decoder, it at least produces some packets, and they look sensible. For example, if you have a CRC and the CRC is okay, you can be pretty much reasonable. Maybe you lost a bit of decoding performance, but at least you haven't broken anything serious. Yeah, the question is whether can we support uh, a couple of different channels. Uh, I guess you can. Not just channels, also you can. Modulation. Yeah, also two different modulation schemes. Uh, so I haven't thought about this yet. I guess you can run two copies of the decoder or transmitter, but if you want some interaction, it's not better. Okay, we got it. So yeah, thank you.